Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon, everybody. I'm going to welcome you to another TTI program. This is a Sunday special. Uh, we normally would meet on a Saturday afternoon, but uh, I'm really, really pleased this afternoon to have Barbara and Neil with us, uh, all the way from sunny America. I'm not quite sure where she's in America, but I know she is in the, in the US. Uh, she normally would reside in Australia, but um, she's having a little break and she's graciously offered to come and speak for us on our platform. So I'm really, really excited. So I just want to welcome you again. We also are on uh, live on YouTube. So I'd just like to welcome our YouTube viewers as well and also our regular TTI members. So I am going to go straight to share my screen uh, because time is short. Oh my goodness me. Uh, can, I don't know if you can see that. Mm, I don't see it, hold on, let's go back. Uh, something seems to not gone quite right. All right, let's try that again. Let's share my screen. Okay, I'm hoping that you can see that now. Yes, I can. we can see it. Okay, excellent. Right, I'm going to go to our disclaimer. This is something we read uh, when we have a presentation. Um, only a physician can diagnose and treat and pres prescribe for illnesses or disease. Any information disclosed or discussed at the TTI Zoom talk show are for education and for information purposes only. Please continue to seek professional medical advice from your general practitioner regarding any illnesses or diseases that you may be suffering from. So we just like to give you that as a as a as a guide, you know, uh, we believe that we will share good information with you, but we do not want to conflict with the uh, your general doctor. Okay, right. Um, is is uh, is Barbara there? Are you there, Barbara? I am. I am. Okay. I, I, just, am, want thank say, you. I just want to say good afternoon to you, Barbara. How are you doing? I'm doing very well, thank you. Good, and, and Barbara's gonna be our speaker. Just before, I'm gonna do a, a quick advert in a moment before I get you to speak. But at this moment, would you, would you just like to share a little bit about yourself? I know everybody knows Barbara and Neil, but just in case there's somebody on here who doesn't know you, if you'd like to just share something about yourself. Okay, a, li a little bit about myself is, um... I guess I started into the health work in my, uh, in my mid-20s because I wanted to treat my children naturally because I'd already experienced that the drugs didn't have a great effect. And little by little, I learned more and more. I had six children and then um, my first husband, who was a drug addict, we parted in about 1993, I think. And then in 1997, my present husband, Michael, asked me to marry him and a year later we started our own health retreat and so for 22 years now we've been running health retreats in Australia and one of our film crew decided to put the lectures up on YouTube all oh, about eight years ago now and that really exploded things for us the the lectures went worldwide and I think the reason why they're so popular is because they make a lot of sense and I like to keep them simple. People say, you make it so simple. I say, yeah, it has to be simple for me. <laughs> so I, I try and make it simple for everyone. Excellent. That's really, really good. I'm just going to do a quick advert. Um, Sharon, if you're available, and then we're going to go straight into the presentation because I know that your time is tight. So if we just hang, hang, hang on a moment, Barbara. Yes, that's fine. I'm here. Hope, okay, can you I'm hear gonna, me? Uh, yeah, I'm just going to uh, share screen again and if you could go through the adverts.
Okay, so good afternoon, everybody. It's me, Sharon, speaking. Um, this first slide is just for those of you who are on YouTube who haven't got access to the Zoom chat, although we will probably put the information on the Zoom chat anyway. But these are the groups that we have, the Telegram groups. We have a women's health Telegram group, a men's health Telegram group, and a spiritual health Telegram group. And the links are on there. So you'd need to type in what's in the blue and that link will take you straight to the Telegram group where we stay in touch with you in the week. We encourage you with um, the challenges that we set. Um, we may share recipes, we may share spiritual encouragement. It depends on the group that you're in. Um, there may be questions that you wish to ask pertaining to men's health or women's health or just general health. And so it's our way of keeping in touch with you in the week. So you know that um, you you, you're you just a click away from um, True Temperance International if there's anything that we would be able to help you with with regards to health. Next slide, please. Okay, this is our link to, uh, this slide is showing you the link to our PayPal, um, PayPal, page I suppose you could call it that if anybody wishes to make a donation um, and you can see on there there's a variety of projects um, that we work towards of course we have the zoom platform that's something that we um, you're benefiting from now um, but there's other things such as a, a books district book distribution um, homeless feeding project um, supporting other well, health classes and lectures. Obviously, that's limited now because of lockdown, but when we're able to open up, we'll be um, going out and going to various venues. So if there's anybody that wishes to help us financially, we'd appreciate the blessings, and I'm sure um, God will truly bless you too. This is today. And then, so tomorrow we have um, what we call Beautiful Creation. It's a presentation for women only, ladies only. That's tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. UK time. The link for the, um, for the platform address, if you wish to call it that, is on there. It's, um, there's no password required, but the Zoom ID is 867. 01430051 and that's by Dr presented by Dr Louisa Mugabe um, Mugabe and she is one of our True Temperance International team members she's a doctor she's presented on here most recently on oh I forgot what the topic was it was about 3 weeks ago heart disease acid reflux acid, acid reflux that's it, acid reflux. Thank you, Shirley. Um, she's got an excited, she's really excited to share this one with us, ladies. Um, well, or, or the special lady in your life, because obviously there's men on here as well. Um, so if there's anyone that you know that you think would really benefit from this, we're looking at the phases of a woman's life from the cradle right the way up to retirement and post post retirement and the different challenges that we face as women and her um, different areas of the life cycle that we go through. Um, so this is gonna be brilliant, one not to miss. Please share it with your friends, um, family, and anybody else that you know that you, you, you will all benefit, ladies. So I'm really encouraging our sisters to join in tomorrow. Um, we'll have a great time. And this is uh, Tuesday, so that, that's, We've got, obviously we've got today, then there's Monday, which is the ladies only, Tuesday, which is a, a regular Bible study. And we've recently been going through the sanctuary and the, the day of atonement. And um, the, the presentations have been very good and very, they've been challenging. Um, the discussions have been very fruitful. So I encourage you, if you wish to join us on at seven o'clock, we should try and keep it simple, seven o'clock on uh, Tuesday, we have the Bible study. So the, again, the Zoom ID and passcode is there for you. So if you wish to take a screenshot, by all means do that. That is our Bible study weekly. On Thursdays, still at seven o'clock, we have our essential oils class. Um, last week, 
This was the poster for last week. We were looking at seasonal allergies and essential oils. And this week we'll be focusing on detoxing with your essential oils. That's a follow on from yesterday's presentation with Sister Louise, Louise Reed. And the ID, as you can see on there, if we just go back, the ID is, the Zoom ID is 829-975-24481. And there is no password necessary for that. And here we have next week's presentation on the True Temperance Family Health Show. It's going to be another double bill. So it's we've entitled it Children's Health Symposium because it's going to be a special Saturday and Sunday presentation. That's the 12th and the 13th of June. Um, and with our presenter for today, Barb, Sister Barbara O'Neill, she'll be on there. And a lot of people have been saying, when are you going to be talking about children's health? It's a family health show. And we a lot of the aspect things that we do talk about can relate to children, but children um, specifically the way we um, the way we deal with health is going to be spe specifically for, uh, for children. So things we do may be different um, with the children because they're still developing. Um, they're, they're, they're growing, their, their brains are developing. And so um, Barbara will be sharing with us in four sessions because we're going to have, these are UK times, we'll be starting at 2 p.m. till 3 that will be the first session. We'll have a 15 minute break, then we'll come on again at 3.15 till 4, I believe it's 4.45. Um, that will include Q&A at the end. And then on the Sunday, it will be the same times, 2 till 3 and then 3.15 until 4.45 4, 4, 4, 4 or thereabouts. Um, so it will be on this platform that you're on now. So. Again, please feel free to share this information with your friends, your family, anybody that you know is going to be interested in learning about children's health. It could be parents-to-be, it could be grandparents, it could be people who are looking after children or just interested in children's health, maybe wanting to find out alternative ways of helping your children through various ailments. And I believe that's the last advert slide. Yes, uh, yes it is. Thank okay. you very much, Sharon. You're welcome. Uh, great, thank you very much. And I th we're gonna turn it over to Barbara. I've been waiting eagerly to hear her presentation and uh, I'm really excited uh, to uh, for this moment. So it's gonna be over to you, Barbara. Thank you very much. And I'd like to welcome everyone to our presentation today called What is Truth? And isn't that, isn't that on everyone's lips today? What is truth? And I have discovered a way to determine what is truth. And I want to share that with you today. I find that this is an excellent way because it uses four main uh, investigative tools. It's called the BHSC method. So what's the BHSC method? Bible, history, science, and common sense. And I think you'll agree with me that God is the author of those four. And they all come together no matter what subject we looked at. So what I'd like to begin with, and I, be, I believe that this is the most important history book, it's the most important science book, it's the most important medical book, it's the most important guidebook for life, and that is the Bible. The Bible has withstood centuries. In the, in the dark ages, they, they burnt millions of copies of the Bible, and they also uh, put many to death who even had two or three verses of the Bible. I I consider this the most important and most precious book that I have in my possession is the Bible. And of course, today, I'm sure we all have the app on our phone, which makes it easy when you're, you're traveling. And I'd like to home in on the title of my presentation, What is Truth? And I'd like to investigate the story behind that statement. It's found in John chapter 18. And we're looking at the dialogue between Jesus and Pilate. 
And Jesus has been brought to Pilate. It's in the, uh, I think it's the latter part of that chapter. And Jesus, and Jesus is in the judgment hall. And Pilate comes again into the judgment hall. I think it's found in 33, we start the dialogue. And he said to Jesus, art thou the king of the Jews? And Jesus answered him and said, are you saying this thing of yourself or has it been told of you? And you can see the irritation in Pilate's voice as he replies. He says, am I a Jew? He says, your own nation, your own chief priests have delivered you unto me. What have you done? Why did Pilate speak like that? Well, it's very early morning. And I'd like to suggest that Pilate, being a ruler, being a wealthy man, probably went to bed late, probably had a huge sumptuous meal late, possibly drinking alcohol, wine, you know, when those wealthy men, they, they had all this at their fingertips. And now he's woken early to go to the judgment hall. He is not impressed. No, and the other reason he said, what have you done? Is because he had a look at Jesus. This was no criminal. He could tell immediately by the look of him, he'd never seen a man delivered to him like this before. So no wonder he said, what have you done? Why did he say, are you the king of the Jews? Because this is what he'd heard. He'd heard the rumours. <laughs> there was no internet then, but word spread fast, especially when you've got 100 people all spreading the word or more. Notice Jesus' answer. Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I not be delivered unto the Jews. My kingdom is not now from hence. My kingdom is not now from here. So Jesus did not deny the claim that he was a king. My kingdom is not of this world. For if it was, my servants would fight. No, my kingdom is not now from hence, indicating that it once was, indicating that it will be again. And Bible students will know that both are true. And Pilate was intrigued. The way this man spoke, he's very bearing. And so no wonder Pilate, Pilate said, art thou a king then? Art thou a king then? Then, because of what Jesus had just said to him, art thou a king then? Jesus said, to this end I was born. For this cause came I into the world, that I might bear witness to the truth. Pilate was intrigued. I can imagine that everything else faded into, into insignificance. He was a man who was testifying to him right now the truth, the truth of his bearing, his countenance, totally un, unruffled by, by the explosions around him of the crowds outside. Notice what he said, to this end I was born. To this end I was born, to this end as a king. For this cause came I into the world, that I might bear witness of the truth. Paul was intrigued. Inside Pilate's mind was a, was a battle. It's a battle that every single human being knows, can identify with. The voice of God was speaking to Pilate's heart. Everything he saw testified. But then Jesus said something that cut Pilate. And at that point, Pilate turned. Jesus said, to this end I was born, and for this cause I came into the world, that I might bear witness to the truth. And those three statements in his mind and in his heart, Pilate knew were true. He'd heard the stories of Jesus. He'd heard his healing. He'd heard that the blind could see, that the deaf could hear, the lame were walking. Whole towns where Jesus entered when he left, there was not one sick person in there. He'd heard them. 
So he knew that when Jesus said, to this end I was born, for this cause came I into the world, that I might bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. And at that point, Pilate knew he was not of the truth. He knew his life was not in any way near what Jesus was referring to. You see, the battle was huge in Pilate's mind. The, the haze, the little centre of his world, at that point when there was just he and Jesus, it widened. The crowd roared. It was screaming for the blood of Jesus. But here was this man who was obviously king. He looked like a king. He had the bearing of a king. His very words testified that he was a king. And so there was a battle in, in Herod's mind. He was weighing up the pros and cons. It was a little marred because of the alcohol last night and the lack of sleep and the late evening meal. His reasoning powers were a little marred and he was a little annoyed that he'd had to get up so early. He was also intrigued. So when Jesus said, Everyone it is of the truth hears my voice. He knew. He knew he was not of the truth. And the dialogue he had in his mind, he weighed up the cost and the cost was too great. He knew that if he, he could have wished Jesus out the back door and freed him. He had that power. But he knew that if he did that, it was political assassination. It was political suicide. He would lose his job. He, he would lose his power. He would lose his fine. He would lose everything. Possibly, you see, the Jews had power. Even though the Romans ruled, the Jews had influence. This very crowd out there told him that. He weighed up the pros and cons. It was too much to us, too much to us. And the next statement says it. Jesus said, to this end I was born, for this cause I came into the world, that I might bear witness of the truth. Everyone that is of the truth hears my voice. Then Jesus said that cry that's going across the world today. He said, what is truth? The Bible says, and when he had said this, he turned and went back to the Jews. Notice that. The Bible doesn't say when he had asked this question because he said it as a statement. He did not say it as a question. He was not inquiring what was truth because he knew what was truth. He knew truth was in front of him. But he weighed up the pros and cons and it was too much. It was too much. The cost was too great. Far too great. That's what God has given each one of us, the ability to weigh up the pros and cons. I would like to suggest that he, if, only, if only Pilate had known more, if he'd known those heavenly mansions that Jesus has now gone to prepare for us, if, if only he'd known. I'd like to suggest that he didn't want to know. He did what many people today, they count the cost and they like what they've got right here and they want to keep that. And there is an enemy out there, a, a great deceiver who's deceived the whole world, who deceives people into thinking what I see is the most important. But what you see is not the most important because everything you see is going to go. You might have heard that in 2019 the fires ravaged big parts of Australia. I flew back into Australia on the 25th of December, cheapest day to fly. I drove into our 400-acre property and it was black. It was black. I praise God that we, not, we lost no buildings. And yet there are many who did. There are many who did. The things that you say, the moths and the rust can corrode, the fire can take away in a moment, and you've possibly heard that in 2020 we had floods and it came up on the news, the, the, the video, of a house floating down the flooded waters. And they gave the story, a young couple just got married. There was their house. 
You only have to look at the news to know that the things that we see, the things that we have, they're not forever. The things that we see do not last. But Pilate, like so many, that they decided to go with what they could see and what they had. So when Pilate said, what is true? Because what had Jesus said? All who hear, all who are of the truth, hear my voice. He briefly heard the voice, but he blocked it out because the cost was too great. And then he, when he said, what is truth? He turned and went away. He did not want to know what is true. Jesus said to his disciples in John chapter 14, and we find it in verse 6, he said, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man cometh under the Father but by me. He is the truth. He is the way, the truth, and the life. But further on in chapter 14, we see Jesus dialoguing with his disciples. And we pick the story up in verse 16, and he says, I will pray the Father, and he will send you another comforter, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him. For he dwelleth with you and he shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. And down in, twist, down, sorry, down in verse 26, I'll just fix my, fix my screen. Down in verse 26, we, le- we read a little bit more. And Jesus said, and the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever things I have spoken unto you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, giveth I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. This is what Pilate gave up. And we know, we know from the story in the Bible that when he heard, about Jesus' resurrection from the dead, he was terrified. What he suspected was true. And Desire of Ages tells us that he eventually left. He was no longer ruler. He ended up taking his own life. He rejected believing and taking Jesus as his king because of the cost. And yet all the cost he paid was, was, was great. Everything he feared happened to him. Everything he feared, if he were to let Jesus go free, happened to him. And we know later in the dialogue, Pilate came back into Jesus and said, well, why don't you do something? Don't you know I have the power to set you free? Do you remember what Jesus said? He said, you, you have no power but that which is given you. But those that have delivered me unto you, they are the ones that have the greater responsibility of what's happening to me. Ever, Jesus, the merciful Saviour. Let's go over to John chapter 16 and we hear Jesus tells us a little bit more about the comforter, the spirit of truth. That's what we want to know is that spirit of truth that's going to guide us into all truth. And it defines it here. He says in, um, I think it's, uh, it's John chapter 16 and it's starting at verse 7. And Jesus says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. What you've got to remember, he will always tell the truth because in Titus chapter 1 verse 2, it says God cannot lie. He cannot lie. So in John chapter 16, starting at verse 7, He says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will come. But if I depart, he will come to you. And then we go down a little bit further where it says, how be it when the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. So even though Jesus' very physical presence is not with us now, he promised that he will send the spirit of truth. And that spirit of truth will guide us into all truth. Let's have another look at truth when Jesus is speaking to some Jews. And we pick the story up in John chapter 8, starting at verse 31. Then said Jesus to the Jews that believed on him, If you continue in my word, you shall be my disciples indeed, 
and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. This is freedom. This is what Pilate could have had, freedom. If he let Jesus go, he would have had freedom. Yes, he would, have, he would have lost his job. He would have lost everything, but he would have had freedom, a freedom that no man can take from us. So Jesus said to the disciples, well, it was the Jews, the Jews that believed on him, found in John chapter 8, starting at verse 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews that believed on him, if you continue in my word, you shall be my disciples indeed. And you shall, shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. If you continue in my word, what is his word? That is the word of God. That's what we each one have of us. We have the word, but we also have his Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth. The spirit of truth, who the Bible says he will teach you all things. He will guide you into all truth because he speaks not of himself. Whatsoever things he heareth, he saith unto you. Let's go back to, to John chapter 18, where Jesus said, if you continue in my word, you shall be my disciples indeed. Jesus is saying this to you and to me today. If you continue in my word, if you read the Bible, if you adhere to its principles, if you pray and ask God to give you that spirit of truth, he has promised. You see, the Bible says in John chapter 8, chapter 8 verse 31, if you continue in my word, you shall be my disciples and indeed, and, my, and you shall know the truth. You will know the truth when you continue in the word. And the truth shall make you free. What a beautiful thing that he says to us, what he says to those disciples. But I hope no one reacts like, like those Jews that believed on him reacted. Notice their reaction. It's a little bit of the pride reaction that you almost saw in Pilate. They said, we be Abraham's seed and have never been in bondage to any man. And how sayest thou, thou shalt be made free. Mm -hmm. Oh, how that must have hurt Jesus' heart. What Jesus does, he puts the ax straight at the root of the tree. He says, whoever can committed sin is the servant of sin. And then he comes in with mercy because that must have cut them. <laughs> then he comes in with the mercy. He said, but the servant abideth not forever, but the son abideth forever. And if the son shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. So we have a choice to serve the servant or to serve the son of God. That's why God gave us reason, intellect, and judgment. Weigh these things up. And then Jesus said, I know you be Abraham's seed, and yet you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. I speak the things which I have seen of my father, and you do the things which you have seen of your father. And then further down a little bit more, he defines it very clearly. In John chapter 8, verse 44, he says, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of the father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and he abode not in the truth, because there was no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Now, there's, there's no beating about the bush there, is there? In the dialogue with the Jews that believed in him, I'm sure there are some whose hearts war. To if, and the sun shall make you free, and the sun abides forever. And if the sun will make you free, you shall be free indeed. But there was an element that rose up. Their pride rose up, and they resisted the promptings to the heart, the promptings that the spirit of truth was prompting on their heart. Please, please come to me. Please come to me. That's what the Savior says. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, we get a beautiful illustration of this where Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. 
And if any man hear my voice, he says, and opens the door. Who opens the door? We do. If any man hear my voice and open the door, he says, I will come in and I will sup with him and he with me. Sup, a beautiful illustration of the intimacy with which God wants to know us. The intimacy with which God wanted to know Pilate. The intimacy with which he wanted to know those Jews that believed in him. But he gives us the choice, the beautiful gift of choice. I believe many don't choose him because they do not read the Bible. The Bible sweeps the veil aside and it shows very clearly the two forces on this planet. There's no other. There's just two, only two. There's a great liar out there, but he has something far more effective than lying. And we're going to find that out when we go to Revelation chapter 12, verse 7, where the Bible says there was war in heaven. You know, the word war is debate, the same debate that happened in Pilate's mind that happens in each one of our minds. There was war in heaven. And Michael, another word for Jesus, and Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Praise God, they prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. That great dragon, that old serpent called the devil and Satan was cast out. Now here it's defined very clearly that there's no wonders here. This is absolute. This is absolute truth. He was cast out. That old serpent which has deceived the whole world. Aha. Here is his most effective means is deception. He doesn't use straight lies or he would lose most. He uses deception. Deception, deceiving people. He deceived Pilate into thinking it was more important that he ease the crowd, keep his position than to acknowledge Jesus as king and do all he could to save him. We know that Pilate could not have ultimately saved him. We know that Jesus was fulfilling the prophecies. But if Pilate had stepped aside and said no, then prophecy would have been fulfilled through another member. Prophecy will be fulfilled. That is the truth of the matter. But if Pilate had chosen to free Jesus, Pilate would have freed himself. Let's move on with Revelation chapter 12. Let's go to verse 10. And I heard a loud voice saying, now is, come, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accuses them before our God day and night. I would say the accuser of the brethren was working in Pilate's mind as if you could ever be accepted. Look at the way you live. Look at the alcohol you consume. Look at your life. Look at da, 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 da. That's the accuser of the brethren. And notice what the Bible says. He accuses before our God day and night. They're no good. They're no good. <laughs> He accuses us, you're no good. You will never make it. As if God could ever accept you. But you know he has and he does. All he asks is that we choose. Because when we say, yes, Father, I want to know you. Lord, I want to know you. Come in. Through our reason, intellect and judgment, we open the door. And then he promises he promises, the promise is found in Ezekiel 36, 26. He says, I will take away your heart of stone and I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you. Remember that spirit, the spirit of truth, that comforter. And he says, I will cause you to walk in my statutes. Yes, I'll keep my judgment and do them. No wonder the Bible says in the next verse. You see, one can get a little discouraged. The great deceiver, the accuser of our brethren. But look at the next verse, verse 11, it says, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony, for they loved not their life unto, unto death. The lamb that was slain, that precious blood that was shed, that was about to be shed 
after that judgment hall. They overcame him. We overcome him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony because they loved not their life unto death. Pilate did not love his life unto death. He was trying to save his life, but in the very choice to reject the king of kings and the Lord of lords, it was a death sentence for him. You see, there's a roaring line, and we find this in 1 Peter 5. Let's start at verse 6. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, and he will exalt you in due season. Casting all your care upon him, he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, knowing that your adversary as a roaring lion walketh about, seeing whom he can devour, whom resist, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. As we say in Australia, we're all in the same boat. That's why looking at the life of Jesus, we see mercy. What does it say in John chapter 1 down at verse 14? And the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us, and we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace, full of truth. No wonder the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4, let us therefore come boldly to the, to the throne of grace that we might obtain mercy. And that spirit of truth that will give us grace to help in time of need so that we can discern truth. It was of the absolute essence that I lay this foundation for you today as we discover what is truth. Every single morning, before you do anything, surrender your mind to God. Allow the gentle Saviour to come in who has promised he will sup with us and we with him. And he has promised, he said, and I will send the comforter. Remember, he said, it's expedient for, for me that I go away. For if I... For if I don't go, the comforter can't come. It comes in power. Never, how be it when the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he does not speak of himself. So the Bible is very clear how we can determine truth. But, but I'm warning you, there is a great deceiver out there. No wonder the Bible says, be sober, be vigilant. Pilate was not sober and vigilant when he came into that judgment hall. We can be sober and we can be vigilant. When we are, we have an edge. This is where the health message comes in. Go to bed early, get a full night's sleep, eight hours. When you wake up, maybe before you surrender your heart to God, have that big blast of water, half a glass. After you pray, you can have another half glass. Have little halves of glass and, and you can add up to those eight glasses that our brain needs so that it is sober. Exercise to increase the blood supply, increasing the oxygen to your brain so you can be sober and vigilant. Eat nourishing food, a plant-based food, so you can be vigilant. No wonder the Bible says, be sober, man. Be sober, vigilant. Be sober, Women, be vigilant man, be vigilant woman, because that's our role. We're the ones that choose what time we go to bed. We're the ones that choose how much technology is around our bedroom. We're the ones that choose to have a main meal at breakfast and lunch so we're not having that late evening meal. So when we sleep, our stomach sleeps. No wonder the Bible says in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God. Uh, an unslept body is not a holy sacrifice. A dehydrated body is not a holy sacrifice. Don't be conformed to this world, the way this world eats and drinks and parties half the night and has technology all around. Hi, Barbara, you've muted yourself. Barbara? Hi, Barbara. Hi, 
Hi, Barbara. You've muted yourself. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. You, you just muted yourself. That's okay. I'm sorry. I didn't touch a thing. <laughs> There's a great deceiver out there who does not want this message <laughs> maybe, out. Maybe somebody muted you. Sorry. Maybe it was one of those evil angels. <laughs> but praise be to God. Do you know what God said in John chapter 16, verse 33? These things have I spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, he says. I have overcome the world. And remember, they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony because they loved not their life unto death. It's absolutely essential that these be established, that you realise your role. Your role, my role, is the choices we make. Apparently, it's about 365 choices a day. I'm bringing in a little bit of science here also now. What are your decisions? What are your choices? Are they made according to reason, intellect? and judgment are they made under the guidance of that spirit of truth father in heaven give me wisdom with this answer to this question you still don't know use the bhsc method i'm going to give you a quick illustration right now coconut oil we're told it's bad is it bad let's use the bhsc method well the bible doesn't talk about it well it doesn't talk about it because the bible was not grown where the coconut grew where the coconut trees grow. But it does talk about another oil. It talks about olive oil. So here's number one. The God has now sanctioned oil. He put a little bit of oil in the woman's cruis who fed Elijah through the time of no rain for three years. God has just sanctioned oil. It doesn't talk about coconut because coconuts did not grow. So let's go to history. I was in Fiji. I was speaking to 5,000 people. This was five years ago. I spoke on the basic laws of health. I spoke on their relationship to the mind and how it is of the utmost essential that we avail our mind of God, that we sweep aside the rocks, that we open the doors and let the God of heaven in. Clear the king's highway, says one of the writers, Ellen White, and let the Lord of glory in. When I'd finished, questions came. And one question was, is coconut oil bad for us? I said to them, were your ancestors healthy 100 years ago? And, of course, what's the answer? Yes, everyone's nodding, nodding ferociously, I'd like to say. Oh, they're very proud of their heritage, their healthy ancestors. When Captain Cook landed on those South Pacific islands, he was confronted with the most magnificent specimens of humanity he had ever seen. The men were tall, strong, agile. The women were beautiful, beautiful, luxurious hair. And what did they eat every meal? Now there was quiet amongst these 5,000 people and then someone laughed and someone else laughed and within five minutes we had 5,000 people laughing. Laughing because how ludicrous is it to say that coconut oil is bad when for centuries these island people have lived on it with the finest of health. Now, we're coming into a bit of common sense now, aren't we? There's common sense. So what about the science? Well, I'm very thankful to an author named Dr. Bruce Fife, and he gives the science behind coconut oil. He shows that coconut oil is high in medium-chain fatty acids and short-chain fatty acids, bit of science here. And the liver quickly converts these medium chain fatty acids, especially to ketones. And ketones are a type of fuel in the body that protect the brain cells and heal the brain cells. Praise be to God for that. In fact, his books show how coconut oil can be used to heal neurological problems. Let me give you a little bit more science on the coconut oil. Coconut oil is a saturated fat, and as a saturated fat, 
The breakdown begins in the mouth. Underneath our tongue, there are sublingual glands. And those sublingual glands release lingual lipase. And lingual lipase breaks down saturated fats. So it's very easy on digestion because the fat is unique. No, no polyunsaturated fat does that. The polyunsaturated fats are not digested until they get to the duodenum under the action of bile and pancreatic lipase. Little bit of science again. Check me out. Please check out everything I say. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5.21, prove all things and hold fast to that which is good. But I must tell you that I check it out before I present it because I am accountable for everything that I say. So the coconut oil is unique in that it digests easier than the polyunsaturated fats. It is unique in that the liver breaks it down to ketones and the brain loves ketones for fuel. So can you see what I've just done with coconut oil? I've used the BHSC method to show that coconut oil is not a danger. It is actually a healer. Well, where did the theory come from? Ansel Keys, 1953, in Minneapolis, put first the theory, well, he was the first to put forth the theory that saturated fat causes heart disease. Well, Dr. Malcolm Kendrick, in his book, The Great Cholesterol Con, he says this, and this he's an English physician, by the way, a cardiovascular surgeon, he said this theory's never been proven. Aha. Uh -huh. And let's go back to Captain Cook, a little bit of history again. So when Captain Cook landed on the South Pacific Islands and saw these magnificent specimens of humanity, Actually, Weston Price, he was a dentist. He did the same thing in the 30s. He took photographs. His whole book is photographs of these magnificent human beings. Perfect teeth. He was looking at the teeth. He was a dentist. By the way, 40 years later with white man's diet, the teeth are all cramped up. The jaws aren't big enough. Hmm, that tells us something. So let's go back to Captain Cook landing on the South Pacific Islands. People went dying of heart disease. In fact, they didn't even know what heart disease was. And they're eating coconut every meal. You, you don't need to be a rocket scientist to determine these ones. And unfortunately, yes, there's lots of studies. But I, when I'm saying unfortunately, I'm saying unfortunately, vested interests often funds the study. So they, they only want to bring out what is going to support their vested interests. We have no vested interest. I've got one vested interest. And that is in the work of God. I've got another vested interest, and that is in human bodies. I love teaching people how to be their own doctors and how to get the best out of their bodies. Let's go to 2021. We're in 2021 today, and there's a lot of confusion about what is truth. And I'm referring to the hottest topic at the moment, and maybe I'm a little bit foolish or brave to 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 tackle this, but I believe that it's important for everyone to know the truth. What is the truth on COVID? Let me give you some facts, and you can actually search out these facts. You can go to worldometer.com and it will give you the figures. The figures showing that 98.8% of people that get COVID recover. Now, did everyone hear that? 98.8, that's almost 99, isn't it? But I have to be technically correct for the scientists. 98.8% of people that come down with COVID recover. So my question is, why are we locking down whole nations against something that 98.8% of people recover from? That makes no sense to me. See, we've got a bit of common sense here. And I'm also looking at the Nuremberg Code. Have you looked at the Nuremberg Code? The Nuremberg Code was set up to prevent experiments on human beings, like as what happened in the Second World War. The COVID vaccine breaks every single one of the COVID. The COVID breaks, sorry, I'm gonna go back. The COVID vaccine breaks every single one of the Nuremberg Codes. In fact, the, the 10th code states, if there's one death, the experiment has to be stopped. 
is it an experiment? It is an experiment. Have there been deaths? Here are the current figures. And you can search this out on Mr. Hill from the Senate committee in Texas. He gives the, he gives the uh, figures, you can search that out. Almost 4,000 deaths in the US from the COVID vaccine in the first four months of this year. 6,000 deaths in Europe this year to the COVID vaccine. So check that out. So the, the, the Nuremberg 10 codes has been violated by the COVID vaccine. There is no other vaccine that has ever been like this. It does not have the FDA approval. It was put through on an emergency law. Do you know what that means? We humans are the experiment. There's been no animal studies done on it. And the few that were done, the animals all die. Please check this out. What I'm telling you is the truth on the matter. God gave us reason, intellect, and judgment to be able to search these things out, to determine what is truth. Now, because this vaccine was put through on an emergency law, and check that out, no one can be mandated to take it because it was put through on an emergency law. Please remember that. Please suss this out. There's been too many deaths already to the vaccine. There appears to be a lot of deaths to the COVID, but my husband states no one dies of old age anymore. No one dies of the flu anymore. No one dies of lung cancer anymore because COVID is put on the death certificate. You can search this out too. There are doctors that are coming out and stating this. But I'm going to tell you something that happened in my circle. My daughter, Emma, she lives in the US and she has a lot of friends who are Amish. One of her friends, the 12-year-old boy, recently drowned in a flooded creek. It was very sad. His clothes were caught on the, on the log. The ambulance came and took him away. On the death certificate, it said, it was a COVID death. The, the parents were angry. They said, but our son died. When the ambulance came, our, our son was dead, declared dead from drowning. But on the death certificate said COVID. And the paramedics said, well, we had to test him for COVID and it was positive. You probably already know there's a lot of question marks about the test. What I'm touching here is a hot topic, but I believe that we need to know truth today. So please, if you're considering the vaccine, put it on hold. Put it on hold. Or even go to the doctor and say, I will consider having the vaccine if you sign this piece of paper saying that I will not have any side effects and that you will be accountable if I do. No doctor will vaccinate if he had to sign that sign. God says, search all things, find it out for yourself. God says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 8, 5, 21, 5, 18 is in, is in everything, give thanks. Praise God for truth. Praise God for his spirit of truth. And then further down in verse 21, God says, prove all things and hold fast to that which is good. And then we will be able to present our bodies living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God, which is such a reasonable service. It's nice living in a body that works. Are there any questions as we close? Uh, thank you, Barbara, um, for the presentation. Uh, we're not gonna open up um, to tech questions um, verbally. But if anybody's got any questions, you can put a question in the chat and we'll present it to Barbara and, and uh, we'll try and get you an answer um, if you try and stay on topic. So um, if the uh, guys in the background, if you could just man the chat and I will do two if there's any questions. I know Barbara's very busy, so <laughs> uh, she doesn't have a lot of time. So we're gonna just have this short time for questions. Uh, and if you have a question, if you want to put it in the chat, we'll present it to Barbara. Yes, I've got five minutes. And may I just say that when we have our weekend seminar on children, and by the way, everyone that was a child needs to be there, 
because you will learn maybe what's happening in you today because of what you were as a child. We will have, we will have the luxury of quite a long question time, but at the moment I just have five minutes, so I'll be able to just answer a few. No problem. Uh, Shirley, if you can just keep an eye on the chat and... Uh... Now I can start with one one I saw, so I okay. can go right into that. What kind yeah. of coconut oil, cold pressed? Coconuts are not sprayed, so coconuts are organic. But when it says cold pressed or virgin, it's really referring to the way that it has been extracted. And so it is of um, it is superior if you can get um, extra virgin uh, organic coconut oil. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm looking to see if there's any other. Um, this is a very powerful presentation. Thank you, Sister Barbara. Now, I just saw another one. Can I answer that one? What can yep, be done ahead. for long COVID fatigues? People have been getting flus for a long, long time, and the COVID is a type of flu. And I think everyone can recall in times past of getting a very serious strain of flu and being very, very debilitated afterward and for some people this is happening with the COVID for some people it is not so really implementing those eight laws make sure you go to bed very early make sure you're drinking water you will not feel like exercising but you must because you will receive more energy than you expend on your morning walk and if you don't have a lot of energy just start with small walks but it's in it's very important to eliminate a few food groups while you're recovering one is wheat. Wheat must be eliminated because one of the most common symptoms of that is fatigue and brain fog. So okay. in your recovery time, have a very strict diet. Okay. So uh, refined sugar and wheat and oats and peanuts, they're the main things to eliminate in recovery time. Okay. Um, somebody's asking uh, for some contact details. Maybe a... Uh, have you got an email that you are willing to what share? What I can do is I can give you the Misty Mountain email, which will go through to our headquarters. Okay. And that's, that's www. Um, sorry, no, that was the website. I'm not. Let me go back again. Let me give <laughs> you the Misty Mountain. It's yeah, sure, relax. Sure. <laughs> it's started with relax at MMH. That's short for mistymountainhealth.com.au. And that will put you straight through to our headquarters. Okay. Yep, that's it. Okay. So it's in the somebody's put it in the chat. So um, if you've missed it, it's in the chat. And I saw one quick question: What can you do if you've already taken the vaccine? If you've already taken the vaccine, I highly recommend. I can't tell you what to do, but considering the information I've presented, I'd highly recommend that you. Do not take the second one because if you look at the deaths that are happening, it's usually after the second, second vaccine. And what can you do to recover? You can take green barleys. So you can buy green barley powder, you can buy chlorophyll, you can buy super greens and have that three times a day. It's one of the best blood cleansers that we have. And also adhering to those eight laws will give your body the right conditions to bring about healing. Could, could I just ask, do you think... Um taking uh, charcoal will actually help or do you think it's not appropriate to, to help with if you've, you've already had the injection it doesn't make no difference now one of the problems is that it takes one minute for one drop of blood to go around your body <laughs> oh okay so within one minute of having the vaccine it's around now you can certainly Try, in fact, if you have charcoal, just have a dose just before you go to bed at night, and it certainly could somewhat help to negate the, uh, the symptoms. Okay. And also remember that God winks at our ignorance. <laughs> and I do realize that everyone that takes the vaccine takes it because they want the, re the, the best for their body. Many, but most take it in ignorance. Okay. Um, I have a question. It says here, you don't have to answer this. It says, hi, hi Brabo, would you personally take the COVID vaccine? Um, I can answer that and I can answer it absolutely not. Okay. In fact, I would rather die than have the vaccine. 
Okay, that's that's clear. I'm sorry, that's a bit strong, isn't it? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it's clear. It's very clear. Okay, okay. Thank you very much, Edgar. I must away, and I look forward to our our weekend seminar. Yes, and um, thank you very very much for this presentation. I know that you're really busy. Um, you, you could you just mention that you said you was doing something? Uh, yes, I'm in uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee, at the moment, okay. and I'm being filmed by Amazing Discoveries, and we've already done about twenty five presentations. Wow! And so the good news is that in in probably within the month, uh, some. Uh, new DVD or some new presentations are going to go up on uh, YouTube. Praise be to God. Please, please pray for those that the great deceiver doesn't inhibit that in any way. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very, very much, Barbara. You take care of yourself and don't, don't ever do it. I know you're busy. Okay. And hopefully okay. We'll, see you we'll see you next weekend. That's right. Thank Good. you. Thank you. All right. No God worries. Bless. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Uh, we'd just like to thank uh, the viewers again for tuning in to TTI uh, for this uh, weekend special. As I said, uh, next week we're going to be uh, having a children's special, which so we're going to have the regular Saturday program. Uh, we're going to start a little bit earlier as well. So there'll be a slight time change on Saturday. Instead of starting at three o'clock, we will be starting at two o'clock. I'm finishing just before five o'clock. And that's going to take place on the Saturday and the Sunday. I'm going to be covering children's health uh, from naught to seven and then from eight to 12 thereabouts, uh, looking at child development, child diseases and problems that we can have uh, and how we can best address it. And for all those who may well have just tuned in, just to let you know that it's the program that you've just watched is being recorded on YouTube. So if you've missed it or you've just joined in, you can, you know, take it back so you can see the whole program. And thank you very much for tuning in with us. Shonen, is there anything that we need to say or pass on at this point? Are you there, Shonen? No. Sharon, is there anything that we need to pass on at this moment? Oh, am I here on my own? Looks like I'm here on my own. No, it's okay, Edgar, that's fine. There's nothing? Um, no. Okay. All Just right. Other than thank you for everybody for tuning in, and thank you once again, Barbara, for your presentation. Yeah. We look forward Great. to seeing you next week. Yeah, very, very, very good. I'm going to just uh, rerun this uh, slide of, of our adverts uh, before we sign off, just so that if anybody has missed it, um, they could um, have a look at um, the, the adver adverts that we've got coming up. So if you could just speak to that, Sharon, for me. Um, I'm going to put them up uh, right now. Uh, if you don't mind, if you just hang on a moment, I'm going to take it back uh, as we go to share screen. Uh, if you could speak to that, Sharon. Okay, um, so you'll just make it a bit larger, please. So for those of you that missed the adverts earlier on today or the promotions earlier on, this slide is just for um, you to be able to see how you can get access or, or join our telegram groups. <coughs> we have three telegram groups with True Temperance International, that's what TTI stands for. And we have the women's wellness, the men's wellness, and the spiritual health group. On, by joining the groups, the contact groups, you can um, maintain contact with us throughout the week. We can support and encourage one another. The next slide is telling us about the PayPal account, or if you wish to support us with any donations, financial donations, True Tempest International will be extremely grateful for any support that you're able to um, give us. And as you can see on there, there's a series of 
uh, uh, there's a list of objectives um, different projects that we work towards in as well as this zoom platform that we're on um, then we have tomorrow evening at 7 p.m uh, Dr Louisa um, some of you know her as um, what's the um, <laughs> um, I can't remember. I can't remember her other name, but anyway, Louisa McGarvey. She's she's going to be presenting tomorrow evening at seven pm UK time. The, the beautiful curation is the title of the topic. Basically, we're looking at the various phases of a woman's life, the different hormonal changes, the different um, responsibilities that we go through from being a a young child, growing all the way through to adulthood and post retirement. Um, this is going to be a fantastic presentation. I'm just so excited to join, for it to, for it to um, happen. We tried to do this last week, but due to circumstances beyond our control and load shedding in South Africa, it wasn't possible. Um, but we know those of us that stayed on, we did have a mini a mini version of what's going to happen tomorrow. So please invite your friends. Invite obviously it's ladies only. Sorry, sorry, fellas. But this one is ladies only. So invite your friends, loved ones who are women, and we will have a great time together. But that's tomorrow evening at seven o'clock. And Tuesday, we have our Bible study. We are going through, uh, we were going through the sanctuary. We were looking at the Day of Atonement. This is Donald Ndlovu. He is presenting currently. And this is on a different platform. Oh, I forgot to tell you the platform from the previous slide, but it's the past, the I, Zoom ID was on there. I'll just zoom in so I can see it. It's 867-014-30051 and no password is required. Okay, so for the Bible study, there is a password required. It's a different um, Zoom ID. And that's one um, we'll be discussing Bible, uh, well, we were looking at the Day of Atonement. I'm not sure what the topic will be tomorrow, but the discussions that we get through from them have been very fruitful. So please feel free. If you'd like to learn more about the Bible, then join us and we will have a discussion on and a study on Tuesday at 7 p.m. UK time. Then on Thursday, we have our usual uh, weekly essential oils class. This poster was from last week where we were looking at seasonal allergies and how essential oils can be used to help alleviate the problems that we're having and help to support our immune system so that we can avoid some of these problems. This week, the topic will be looking at detoxing. So how, how essential oils can be used to assist with detoxing your system. We had a presentation yesterday by Louise Reed and we were looking at various ways of detoxing, whether it's the liver detox, the lymphatic system, the skin, um, using water. There's many different ways we can detox, but we're going to be looking at how essential oils can be used. And the Zoom ID, as you can see on there, is 829 uh, 8299-752-4481 and no password is required. So that's this Thursday coming at 7 p.m. You try and keep it simple, all the sevens, okay, 7 p.m. And next week on True Temperance International on the Family Health Show, that's next week, Saturday, we are going to have a presentation by Sister Barbara O'Neill, who you've just heard speaking. And their topic is children's health. Now this is gonna be a Saturday and Sunday presentation. The times, note the time change, 2 till 3 p.m., then 3.15 to 4.45. So be mindful that the times are going to be different to what we normally have on Earth. Uh, it'll be an hour earlier. Um, you have 15 minutes where you can stretch, move about, do some exercise. Uh, maybe you'll Zoom from outdoors because I don't know what the weather's going to be like, but it's also always good to get your sunshine and your fresh air and some exercise. So you might want to Zoom and talk, but obviously be safe, whatever you're doing, however you're joining us. Um, and that's a Saturday and a Sunday. So as Barbara was saying, we all, it's, it would do well, we would all do well to learn about children's health. If you get it right with the children from the beginning, then if you start well, they say, start how you mean to go on. So it will have an impact on the adolescent years, on the teenage, uh, teenage adolescent 
and the adult years, how we start will impact how we finish. And on that note, I think I finished with the ads. Edgar? Thank you very much, uh, Sharon, uh, for doing those adverts. Um, I'm going to just stop sharing right now. Uh, I'd just like to thank everybody for being here and taking out your busy time. You know, Sunday uh, for a lot of people is preparation time for the week. And so they've got lots to do, cooking, cleaning and preparation. So thanks very much that you could join us today. Uh, I think we are at the end of our show. Um, um, as Sharon says, there's the platforms that you can join. You can go back on YouTube. If you missed the uh, program, and then there's past programs that you can look at as well. Um, you can subscribe to YouTube and you can also join us in TTI uh, on our groups. You can ask questions on the groups is like recipes and all different things. And you can just ask questions and dialogue with, with other people who are into health and want to um, have the best health possible. So uh, I'm gonna say goodbye to our YouTube um, viewers and thank you for joining us. Uh, so say bye, I'm sure that's gonna cut off soon. And if anybody has, uh, a comment or wants to say hi, you can do that now um, as we're kind of closing the show and wrapping up. But thank you very, very much for being with us today and we'll see you soon. But if you'd like to unmute and say hi or you've got a comment, you're welcome to do that now. Thank you. Um, is that goodbye for YouTube, Edgar? Yes, yes. If you say goodbye to the YouTubers, um, we'll see them next week on Saturday. Or unless the other groups that are in the week that they want to take part in. Yeah.